1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Sure, There's right. about 40 odd needles, you like. Proof if proof was needed of the scale of the UK's drug problem. Elwyn and Linton are involved with a drug and alcohol charity in Newport. They say discarded needles were largely absent from the city's streets during the pandemic, not anymore. With the easing of lockdown and the availability of temporary accommodations waning, uh, we are seeing a lot more tents in the city uh, in different areas. So with homelessness comes street using. The figures out today show the highest number on record of drug-related deaths in England and Wales. I mean, what's your reaction to that? That's sad. Uh, one, one preventable drug-related death is, uh, is bad enough, but to see an increase, uh, it's, it's devastating. Today's figures show 4,561 drug-related deaths registered in England and Wales last year, an increase of 3.8% on 2019, and the highest number of deaths since records began in 1993. Two-thirds of deaths were related to drug misuse. The Central Club. What's going on, people? Welcome to The Central Club. I think today, Tom, we're going to talk about the drug-related deaths during the COVID pandemic and how it's affected a lot of people. In Cardiff, Cullen and Tom are preparing for their next podcast. A year ago, Cullen came very close to becoming another statistic. He ended up in hospital with sepsis and pneumonia. It was the culmination of more than a decade addicted to heroin. Yeah, they said I was lucky to live. Um, woke up a day after, you know, passing out with drip, two drips in each arm. I then caught COVID in there as well. Um, I was a mess. I, I had to pray to a higher power to get through that. Cullen has now been prescribed the heroin substitute Buvidal, which he credits for saving his life. The once a month injection is now being used more widely in Scotland and England as well as Wales. Figures released last week showed Scotland continues to have the worst drug death rate in Europe. In England, today's figures show a north-south divide. In the northeast, the rate of deaths linked to drug misuse is three times higher than in London. Here in Wales, the rate has fallen to its lowest since 2014. Drug users in Newport have been trained as part of a pilot project to use naloxone. It helps reverse the effects of an overdose. Have you had personal experience of people, users who have overdosed, who you've then treated? Oh, of course, yes, yes, I've delivered it. I've delivered the intervention on two, on, on two different occasions and saved life. My team... I uh, mean, you say it as, as though it's just a normal occurrence, but you've saved someone's life in doing that. Yeah, but I'm a drug worker. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an experienced drug worker, frontline drug worker, and uh, I think the credit goes to my team. Now the UK government wants to make naloxone more available to frontline workers like the police. But charities say there also has to be more investment in prevention and treatment. We have systematically stripped money out of the treatment system whilst watching these death rates increase. I feel it is the government's responsibility to provide comprehensive and accessible services to stop these preventable deaths and the destruction that they cause within the communities that they happen in. The Welsh government has welcomed the fall in deaths and says it's increased funding to tackle substance misuse. The UK government says it has two an extra £148 million, describing it as the largest such investment for 15 years. Well, Professor Dame Carol Black, who led the independent review of drugs, joins us now from Cambridge. Uh, Professor Black, this is a very hard-hitting uh, report. You've said drug services are on their knees. The system isn't fit for purpose. How so? Well, that is true, John. It's not fit for purpose. When you look at it, the amount and the quality of treatment that's available to anyone who's drug dependent has been decreasing over the last eight years. A very practical example, a drug worker should have about 35 clients on their books. The average would now be 50, and in many places it's 80. We have only 51 psychologists, um, and we should have one psychologist per local authority. That means we need 150. I could go on. We have 
a demoralized, reduced workforce, and we have a disorganized, unaccountable treatment system at the moment. And you say that the remedy is that we need to invest £1.8 billion more in drug services. Do you have any confidence that the government's listening to you? I do think the government is listening. I think um, Number 10 has listened. I am, of course, now, um, or at least the government, is dependent on the Treasury over the next five years finding that amount of money. We need £119 million for the next year, and then it builds up each year, and the fifth year is £550 million. In a way, this is not a problem just of treatment. It's, a, it's all about inequality, jobs, housing and more, isn't it? No, you're absolutely right. And you'll see in my report that I've put together the needs of a drug-dependent person in that way. They need clinical care, recovery time. They need mental health and trauma-informed care. They need safe housing and the opportunity to work. And each time you take away one of those things, we've never really put them all together before, then you get less chance of a successful recovery. Now, many people say that drug use simply isn't being treated as a health condition. And as a result, it's extremely low on the priority list. Well, it has been low, but I'm hoping very much that my report will, rise, will bring it up the agenda and make it much higher on the priority list. As you probably know, 50% of homicides, um, about 49% of other serious crime and a third of our prison places are due uh, to drugs. Um, and therefore, if we want a safer society, we've got to get on top of the treatment and recovery of those who are dependent on drugs. You can't do this all by suppressing supply. And in a word, what are the chances that something drastic will be done? I think the chances are reasonable, and if it's not done, John, then we were just going to get more deaths and more misery for many, many people. And it costs the government £19.2 billion a year. Dame Carol Black, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. Thank you.